Hello. What's going on? Hope you're all happy and dandy and absolutely perfect today. Saturday morning. It's a bank holiday weekend, so we get three days off of work, everybody. And I thought, let's try and sort some of these issues out. Oh, by the way, I've got a mug of coffee, and this one happens to be, I've just made it, this one happens to be whatever that says on there from that country, can't pronounce it, but uh, it's nice, uh, and you get like, I got, I got gifted this, I got an Amazon wish list, and um, I put things and bits and bobs on there, put the links in these videos for it, and other people, you know, and um, somebody a long while ago gifted me um, a box of coffees, and today's flavour is this one, and I've had, I think I've got one more flavour left, you think you get like 10 in a box or something like that, and they're bloody nice, so that's what I've got today, I'm going to make a video for you lot so that you can see how to set up your throttle trim, because do you remember in the last video, there was that chap, Jamie, and he was telling me that his engine doesn't start, his tick over is wrong, blah blah blah, and he sent me a video saying that the tick over screw does nothing, it's because he didn't set up his throttle trim on here, and um, it's difficult for some people to understand how this works. So I'm going to make you a little video now to try and help you understand how this works. Because there's actually two ways of adjusting a tick over. The first way with the throttle trim isn't really a way. It's, it's a throttle trim, but you can adjust a tick over with it. And if you've got it set up wrong, the tick over screw, or the idle screw if you're in America, won't work. It won't do anything. So I'm going to show you how to set it up properly so that the screw actually does what it's supposed to do. And also, so your throttle and your brakes are set up because they, remember, they work together. They're on the same servo. So let's have a look. The camera is going to run out of battery, but let's hope I can get this video done before it runs out of battery. So I'm going to use the FTX Carnage as the example specimen today because it's the car that a lot of you seem to have. These are very popular little cars because they're cheap. I think I paid £120 for this. Um... And for £120, it's bloody good. And I bought it brand new as well. Um, you can get them from Active Scale Models. So if you want to get a new car, go over to it. I'll put a link to Active Scale Models in, in the description of this video, actually. So you can go and have a look at their website, because they're bloody good. And, uh, right, let's get on. Let's find a tripod somewhere. I can't find it. Oh, there it is. There's my tripod. So here we go. Got a nice close-up view. So let's take these off. Now... Here we go, it's probably best if I do turn it around like that. So we've got our car, FTX Carnage, lovely little car. Now, I'm going to take the air filter off, because it's easier for me to show you a lot, but you don't need to have the air filter off, but I'm going to take it off, as I said, to show you. So, what we need to do, turn on our transmitter, I know you can't see that. Turn on the receiver, there we go. We're alive, and we're working well. So, on on the um, transmitter, you've got, this is a particularly bad transmitter they use on these, so it's not easy to show. Where is it? Steering trim, throttle trim, that's that one. So, on these transmitters, it's the middle one. If I turn that off, you might better see it a bit better. Is that going to focus on that? Come on. Come on. Oh, what a particularly bad way to do it. Focus. There we go. Right. Can you see where it says th dot trim? Anyway, th um, dot trim is throttle trim. And um, st.trim is the steering trim for the steering, but we're not on the steering at the moment. And the other one is just um, to, for you to put like your um, end stops <coughs> for your steering. But anyway, we're going to concentrate on the throttle. So what you need to do is you need to turn that, right? Turn the throttle trim, and as you turn it, you'll notice the servos are moving, right? Now, you've got to try and get it. Look at your throttle there, or you can look at it here if you've got the air filter on. And you want to turn it. <coughs> excuse me. You want to keep turning it to the point where it just starts to open up the throttle. 
And then you want to back it up a little bit to the point where it no longer affects the throttle, okay? So I'll do that again. This is bad. If you've got it open like that, okay, not only will your tick over be higher, because if you notice, the little gap is bigger. You watch, I'll turn the throttle trim again. Look at the gap on the throttle. Can you see it? Um, can you see it opening and closing? That's closed. That's open, all right? That's too much. Your brakes will be on. Oh, they're not on, but they'll be closer. But we're not on about brakes. We're on about the throttle. So, <clears throat> you want to set it. So, you might need to adjust these little Allen things here, but for now, just to try and keep it simple for you lot that are beginning, I'm going to talk solely about this um, throttle trim. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you want to turn it again until... The servo is moving, see that's too much, there. Now, that is the sweet spot in the middle, where the servo has moved, the thr but the throttle is fully closed. But it's, it's you know, if I was to move the servo, tr the throttle trim any more to the right, it would open the throttle. So it's just, just at the end. And that way, we get full throttle when we do full throttle. When we're off full throttle, it goes back to a tick over. And also, the brakes. It affects the brakes as well because they're on the same servo, okay? So if you've got it too far, the dial's turned too far to the right, say, I've got it on number just below one at the moment. If I had it on number three, I wouldn't have... A, a, the tick over would be too high and the brakes would come on very soon when you press the brake. But... Now we've got that set up properly, I want to show you what the tick over screw should do. Because all the tick over screw is, let me just go and get a screwdriver. Alright, I've got a screwdriver. I'm going to take the little screw out so that I can show you what it actually is. And, and hopefully show you how it works. So, you got to screw it a bit more. I took one out in a previous video where I also was showing blocks. Where I was also showing how to do the tick over. Right, so this is this is the tick over screw or the idle screw for you Americans, Canadians, Australians, and anyone else who speaks that language. Right? All it is is a screw with a little fin bit on the end, okay? Now it doesn't actually regulate any fuel, it doesn't do any, regulate any air as such. All it does is it goes in that little hole there and it pushes on the slider. I'm going to call it a slider, there's many names for it. I'm going to call it a, th a throttle slider, okay, just for simplicity. It pushes on that and pushes it outwards. Now, because you've got your throttle trim set so it's pushing it closed, the screw will fight with the servo and push it out, which is what we want. If we have it set so that, I can show you, right, let me put it back in again, but if we have it set so that the servo, the throttle trim, is opening the throttle and regulating the tick over that way, this screw is rendered useless because it just doesn't reach you know, and when you when you put when you turn the screw outwards to reduce the tick over speed to lower the tick over, it won't be effective because the throttle servo is holding the throttle open anyway. So you have to set the throttle trim before you can use the the um, the screw. Now, hopefully, I don't know if you can. Hold on. I think now, looking at this little screen, I think now you can see. Wait. Let's move you lot down there. Right. I don't think that's made it any better, is it? Has that made it any better? I don't think it has. Right. We're coming across a bit of a dilemma here. In the, in the way of, I can't get the camera 
I'm going to have to get you off a handheld. Oh, there we go. Right. <clears throat> right, I think you can see in there now. <coughs> right. So, we've got now, we've got the throttles trim set um, the way that I told you to set it. Right. And this is the, the screws all the way out now. Okay. Right. So, that the screw is now not touching the slider at all because it's too far outwards. The trim is holding the throttle where it is. If I turn the screw inwards to raise the tick over, you will see the throttle now is opening. Can you see that? The throttle's opening. There's a big, big gap there now. That would be a huge tick over. You saw it pushing the throttle open as I was screwing it in because the screw is pushing on the slider. And the same way as now, because the servo is fighting that way against the screw, when I go to undo the screw, it closes the throttle again. There we go. So that's how that works. So it's very important that you set the trim before the screw because as Jamie was sending me his video, I could see very clearly that his problem wasn't the tick over screw and it wasn't the carburetor. It was actually, I think we've sorted his car now. I think I sent him a message and it's all sorted. It was actually the fact that he didn't set his trim up on his transmitter and he was turning this screw in and out, in and out, and it wasn't doing anything because the servo was holding it like that. So he was doing the screw in and out and it wasn't even touching the slider because, you know. <laughs> it's, it's already been held outwards so what you need to do is you need to use that like I've just told you and you set it that way I'm going to put that round about there I don't know exactly a lot, if, a lot of these people that are properly like geeks um, what they do and I've had quite a lot of people comment as well on the, on the, um, on the videos giving me what the precise gap should be for a perfect tick over and what they do is they get a little caliper <clears throat> or, or put a rule on there <clears throat> and they measure the gap and they say the gap should be precisely one a millimeter for a perfect tick over well it's all very well if you want to measure that and i'm sure that it works for you <coughs> but no engine is going to be tuned the same. No engine is going to be run at the same altitude in the world. No engine is going to be the same at all. So, to, to say that you should set the idle to a specific measurement, to me, is no good. Because, you know, it's just going to be different for every car. And they run at altitude, fuel types, tuning, glow plug type, you know, the condition of the engine itself. The condition of the car, Bretta, there's so many factors that will change a tick over speed and, and the way an engine reacts to the fuel and everything. So I don't I don't think that you can measure it. All you've got to do, you've just got to experiment. And it's not a case of this video is probably 15 minutes long now, or 10 or minute, whatever. It's not a case of taking it off, spending half an hour turning that turning the transmitter it's not a case of that it's a very simple if you're doing it in real life without filming it it literally takes about a minute and you know what i mean you don't even need to take the air filter off i took that off just to show you you literally turn it so you you can see the throttle is no longer being moved by the servo it's at the end of its stop but it's not fighting it too far and then you just start it up and you adjust that screw until it's got a good tick over it's as simple as that. <coughs> Sorry. I've got a bit of a frog in my throat this morning. I don't know what it is. I think it's dust. It inhaled a bit of dust throughout the week. So, there we go, my friends. Remember, Nitro RC is not intimidating. And I'm not, I'm not saying that to make you lot that are intimidated feel like idiots. I'm saying it to try and to try and help you. You know, to try and give you the confidence that you need. To sometimes do things because I can, I think some of you that are a little bit intimidated and think that you might break something, especially if you've got no engine experience. I mean, I've got a lot of experience with full-sized engines as well as nitro engines, you know. So engines to me are not intimidating in the slightest, um, which is why I hope to try and pass my confidence and knowledge on to you lot. And hopefully now you can 
set your tick overs and have your engines running you know pretty well and I've got tuning videos different types because there's all different ways you can tune an engine I mean some people do do it on a, on a bench with a blocker or on a proper actual stand and tune it that way um, I prefer to tune it while you're actually driving the car going up and down that way so that's the way that I do I've done the videos I might do a video and later on at some point to show you how you can tune a car without actually even driving it without even driving it you just need a block and a space where you can make a load of noise basically it won't get it perfect but it'll get it pretty good so I might do that so as long as you've got your tuning right you'll have a good tick over so I don't want to keep going on and keep confusing you lot because I know I talk a lot and I confuse people and I say things in a bit of a jumbly way but hopefully you're going to understand now You've got to set your servo right before you can set the tick over screw. Good. And look, I know I said don't measure it, but have a look at the gap. If you've got a gap that's bigger than that, it's not. It's going to be too high. That's the reason why your car, your wheels spin all the time, and your car wants to drive off. If the gap's too small, very small, another reason why it probably won't tick over, and it'll cut out every time that you you put the brakes on. I'll quickly just touch on that. Um, quickly, because I don't want to confuse you lot. A lot of you do send me messages saying that your car, your engine runs fine, but every time you put the brakes on, the engine cuts out. So you might be down the bottom of a field, you put the brakes on, the engine stops, and then you have to go all the way over the field to start it up again. <clears throat> That's more than likely prov assuming that your tune is okay. The, the fact that you've got your tick over screw too far out, and you've got so that what happens then is, if you take over screws too far out, when you push on the brakes, that I'll demonstrate. So the tick over screw now is too far out, way too far out, okay? You can see we've still got a good gap there because the servo is holding it in place. But the minute we put the brakes on, it closes that gap. And then it brings it open again. Can you see that? So we're no longer relying on the tick over screw to hold that throttle in place when we put the brakes on. So it's closing the throttle, causing the engine to stop. So the tick over screw and the servo work in unison together to keep the engine on a tick over when you put the brakes on and things like that. Very quickly touched on that, but it's very simple. I hope you will understand that now. Anyway, you lot, have a brilliant bank holiday weekend. It's Saturday morning when I film this, so I'm going to have Saturday, Sunday and Monday to do whatever. Hope you have a good bank holiday, hope you enjoy yourselves, and if that helped you, put it in the comments and let me know. If you didn't, and you need further clarification and further information, just put it in the comments and I'll make another video, simple as that. And if you put it in the comments, other people can help you. Um, you can't rely on everybody, because a lot of people do things wrong and think they're doing it right, and then put it in the comments, and then, but well, they're really doing it wrong. But you, have, it's, you, you get the gist. I'll catch you later. All the best.